Welcome to part three of our echinoderm notes. This is a class Cridoidea that we'll be talking about first. These include feather stars and sea lilies, and they look very different than the sea stars do. They're primitive. Um, they are the most primitive in this phylum. There are about 625 species. They can have um, Usually there's about five or ten arms, but their arms will branch out to over 200. Um, so they look, they have like a feather-like appearance to them. Um, they are suspension feeders, so they'll, they'll kind of stick out these feather appendages and trap plankton. Um, they don't have suckers on their, on their arms, but um, they do have like little, they call them podia, they're kind of like the tube feet, but they don't have suckers on them. It has mucus instead that helps trap their uh, food. And then there's little tiny cilia that help move the food towards their mouth so that they can eat. They're not very fast movers, so um, they're going to depend on other structures on their bodies to help them catch food. Uh, they can move, like I said, and the top part of their their feathery area is not what helps them move. They have these little cirri underneath, and I don't know if you can see, there's a couple branches down at the bottom. Those are what help them move and crawl around. This diagram shows you very nicely the top part with all the feathery arms is the crown and then you can see the cirri down at the bottom those are like their little moving arms the ones that help them travel Now we move on to a slightly different class, their class Crinoidea. This includes sea lilies. And the difference between these guys and the class, the previous one, is that they have a stalk that they, um, that they have. Uh, they are mostly sessile. They use this stalk to attach to a substrate. Um, they have like a couple of shaped body. Their crown has lots of branching on them again that helps them to filter their food and, uh, and catch food that way. This is a fossil of an ancestral echinoderm and you can see how it resembles the uh, sea lily quite a bit. Moving on to class Ophiuroidea, these are going to include brittle stars and basket stars. They typically have just five arms, but there's a lot of branching on those five arms. Um, they, there's about 2,000 species of them. A lot of times they just kind of hang out and they're, they're hidden in the sand or under things. Sometimes they live within uh, sponges. The arms are distinct from their central disc, and you can see how feathery they look here with all their extra um, divisions that they have. They can crawl, cling, um, they can be a, a range of type of feeders. They can pr be predators, scavengers, suspension feeders. They do not have any pedicillaria. They don't have those little pinchers on their skin. For movement, um, they don't have the, um, the tube feet with the suckers on them, so they use mucus to trap things as well. They don't have dermal branchiae, so um, they will use more or less diffusion to help them exchange gases. Uh, the tube feet are moved by muscles at their bases. They don't really have the suckers that our sea stars had. And the major port is located on their oral side. And this is different from the sea stars where their major port was located on the aboral side. 
For reproduction, they can regenerate their missing body parts. They use autotomy as well to escape predators. They are dioecious and they have external fertilization. Their larval stage is called an Ophiopluteus, and it can swim around and feed on plankton. This brings us to our last slide in this set of notes, so you can take another break or you can pick up with part four.